Hello, welcome to another lesson on MCQs of preparation of statement of cash flows. So in the last sessions, I have already explained all the concepts related to the preparation of a statement of cash flows. And now we will do different kinds of MCQs and each MCQ would give you a concept. So listen to the explanation carefully, but first try to attempt it yourself. So let's go and uh, see the MCQs. Yeah, so this MCQ, Q44, uh, is, was already explained in the previous class when I had explained about uh, amortization of premiums and discounts on bonds payable. So this was done. So I request you to look into the previous recording. Now this sum is a very interesting sum. And this would give you a full idea about cash flows, uh, preparations of cash flows. And also, it's a good question to come for an essay because in the past, they have asked a question in the essay to prepare a statement of cash flow. So this could be one of those uh, questions which can come for an essay. So here, Basically, they're asking for cash inflow from operating activities. So you can expect a positive figure since they're asking for cash inflow from operating activities and all are positive figures, right? So basically, what we need to be doing is to start from the net income, okay? Because they're given two years balance sheet, so it has to be by the indirect method. So let us start with the net income. I'm putting it as NI, and that is 82,000. I'll put it all in thousands so that I don't have to put, uh, put those zeros. So 82, net income is 82. And just let us see the difference between the two retained earnings, just to find out if they paid any dividend. So 175 minus 93 is also 82. So the income is the only thing which is the difference between the two. Because sometimes they would pay a dividend. So that had to be taken, that also has to be taken into account, okay? So anyway, for the operating activities, since they asked you only operating activities, the dividend does not count. Uh, so we can take this net income directly. Now, uh, after that, the main challenge here is to find out the depreciation. How much is the depreciation for the year? Right? For that, let us talk about the accumulated depreciation. And also, there has been a sale. There has been a sale of equipment. So, yes, when you're talking about accumulated depreciation, the beginning balance was uh, uh, 70,000, right? Beginning balance was 70,000. And then what happened? What happened? We'll see here with the equipment. Uh, an equipment costing 60,000. So cost of the equipment is 60,000. And net carrying value was 53,000. That means there was an accumulated depreciation and then the net carrying value was 53. So it implies that the accumulated depreciation was seven, right? And then was sold for a 10,000 gain. So that means if it was sold for a 10,000 gain, so at that gain, it would have been sold for 63,000. Okay, it would have been sold for 63,000. So let us analyze the accounting entry for this. Debit, okay, I will uh, write it here. Debit cash, how much? It should be what they sold it for, 63. Credit or remove the all the asset related uh, matter from the balance sheet. So credit the fixed asset, the old equipment, which is costing 60,000, credit that, remove it. 
Accumulated depreciation was seven. We had to remove that also. So debit accumulated depreciation seven. We are removing that. Okay. So then this is 70. And they have also told you the gain is 10. So that makes it easier. So this would be uh, tallying the credits and debits. So now we got the gain. And also, since we are accu debiting accumulated depreciation for seven, accumulated depreciation is a credit item. When you debit, you're reducing it. So because of the sale, the accumulated depreciation uh, would be deducted from the opening balance. Okay. It would be deducted from the opening balance because of the sale of the fixed asset. Right. So you should be having strictly 63 in the account. What they have told, what they have told the closing balance. The closing balance of accumulated depreciation is 83. So it implies that 20 was the current year's depreciation. Okay. So it implies that 20 was the current year's depreciation. So we would add that because it's a non-cash expenditure. We would add the depreciation. And also there's a gain. I have explained in the previous uh, videos that gain should be removed because uh, basically we'll be showing the entire proceeds in the investing uh, sec uh, section of the cash flows. Okay, so this gain basically is included here in this cash and that we would be showing it in the investment uh, section of the cash flows. So now this gain we will remove, 10 gain. Yeah, so these are the main adjustments. And after that, it's a matter of uh, looking at all the other items. And if AR has reduced, AR has reduced from 43 to 37, it implies that, it implies that we would have got money from accounts receivable. So AR 6, we should add it. Inventories have increased. Okay, so we would take it as, as if we are paying cash for it. Okay, so inventory, uh, inventory was 12 minus. Okay, if we didn't pay cash, accounts payable would increase and it would make up for that, right? So that is it. And then equipment, etc., is about, uh, is investing activity. They have asked us only operating activity. Accounts payable has reduced, implying that we have paid. So accounts payable 22 to 19 is a three reduction. So cash would have gone out. Notes payable, there's no change. Anyway, it's financing. Common stock, there's no change. And that's it. We would do the math. So 82 plus 20 minus 10 plus 6 minus 12 minus 3. That would give us 83. That is cash flow from operating activities. So C is the answer. Okay, we answered the question. Now what I would request you all is to go ahead, do what, do more than what the question has asked because we are studying here, right? So we need to understand everything. Why don't we do the investing activities as well? Right, we can do the investing activities as well. So let us try what happened to investing. First of all, they have told you here clearly that the new equipment was purchased for 100,000. Okay, and an item was sold for 63,000. So uh, FA equipment purchase, Okay, you are not supposed to net off the amounts. You have to show the purchase separately and the sale separately. Okay, that is that is the uh, gap. Gap insists on that. Okay, so a hundred thousand decrease in cash flow because of the purchase. But you can also find it out from here. 
You see, if you talk about the equipment account, it had an opening balance, beginning balance of, of 360, right? Then we sold an equipment which is given here. So even if they are not given you their purchase 100,000, we can find it out. I'm showing you how. Okay, so they sold an old equipment of with original cost of 60. So I would say sold. It should reduce the beginning balance. So you should strictly be having 300 in your equipment account, but they are saying that you are having 400. Okay, so if the closing balance is 400, closing balance is 400, it implies that 100 is a purchase. So even if they are not given you that figure, you can, you can figure it out yourself. So 100 is a purchase and the sale of equipment, the sales proceed of the equipment, we have already, they already told us and we have seen here that it brings in cash of 63. So that's a positive. So what is the net cash outflow? The net cash outflow is 100 uh, minus plus 63. So 37 negative cash flow from investing. Financing is zero. If you see there was nothing increase or decrease in notes payable, nothing in the common stock. The difference in retained earnings is right here. We started off with that figure. Okay, so that's it. Financing is zero. So what's the net cash? The net cash flow is 83 minus 37, 46, 83 minus 37, 46. To this, you add the opening balance, which is 39. If you add the opening balance of uh, 39, you would get the closing balance of 85. 85, which is what is shown here. So we arrived at the closing balance. See, that's when we know that we have done our cash flow statement correctly, right? Of course, you have to classify it also correctly, each item. You cannot put an investing uh, cash outflow into operating. You will even then get the proper uh, closing balance, but it would be wrong. So we have to classify it also correctly. And we know for sure, because when we do cash flow statements, we already know the answer. It has to be the closing balance of the physical cash uh, with the company. So 85 is the closing balance. So we have done everything here. In fact, there was nothing in financing. Had there been some dividend, et cetera, we should have shown it as an outflow in the financing, but nothing was there. So only uh, operating and investing cash flows and we got the closing balance. So this is a complete cash flow statement. Do it by yourself independently, then you will be a master of it. Now let us go to the next question. This is fairly easy, but it has a concept. Right, so let us now uh, arrive at the proper cash provided by operating activities. So let us start with the net income, 870,000, okay, 870,000, right, and then there is a depreciation selling and uh, general expenses includes depreciation of uh, 200,000. So you would add 200,000 depreciation. You add 200,000 because it's, a, uh, it's not a cash outflow. Okay, so it's a non-cash expense, right? And then what else? There's a gain of 40,000. Gain should be removed because everything would be shown in the investing section. 
So it'll be double counting the cash if we include the gain. So we would remove this 40,000. Right? So that's what we should do. And then what about interest expense? There's an interest expense of 100,000, of 50,000. What should we do with it? The thing is, we don't do anything with it. The reason being, interest expense, as I told you in earlier lectures, that it's a part of operating activities. So, two possible things could have happened. Debit interest expense, 50,000, and credit cash, 50,000. In which case, it's a cash outflow and it belongs to operating activities and it's included here, so we do nothing about it. But what if this has happened? Debit interest expense, 50, and credit interest payable. Maybe it was accrued because uh, everybody prepares their statements, uh, financial statements on the accrual basis. So if this has happened, it has reduced the income, but cash has not gone out. There's an increase in payable, so you have to add it back. But again, don't bother to do anything because it would be then included in the current liabilities, and that has increased by 150,000. So that would get automatically added or included in this current liability. So current liabilities, anyway, we are adding it. So even interest uh, income tax expense, had we not paid it, it would have been included in current liability, and we'll get we'll add it back. Okay. And similarly, non-cash current assets has risen by hundred thousand. So whenever a current asset increases. There's an increase in income, a debit to the current asset and increase in income, okay, without, a ca without cash coming in. So we have to deduct this, okay? Now, these are all current liabilities. So that has got added back. But what about a non-current liability? Now, this one includes a long-term deferred tax expense of 30,000. So what would I be in the entry? It would have been debit deferred tax expense, which is included here in the income tax expense, okay, which is 30,000 and credit a deferred tax liability. Now deferred tax liability is always considered long-term. Deferred tax assets and deferred tax liabilities are no longer classified as current. There's all, always going to be long-term. And in fact, he has also mentioned here, a long-term deferred tax expense. This is accrued, right? It won't be paid immediately, right? So that is why it's called a deferred tax liability. We would do more about it when I do uh, deferred taxes, right? Which is a part of part one. So for the moment, Remember that this is a non-current liability, non-current liability, and we have not yet added it. So you have to add it because a liability would go to reduce the income by increasing an expense without an outflow of cash. See, the cash is not going out. Okay, so an increase in a deferred tax liability should be added back, right? And that's it. We have cash flow from operating activities. So if you do the math, it's going to be 870 plus 200 minus 40 plus 150 minus 100. 1080 is also there if you don't add the deferred tax liability. That's not the answer. So you add 30 and then we get the correct answer. Many people would get 1080. Okay, so 1 million 110. B is the correct answer. So that is how this has to be understood. So what is the takeaway here? No adjustment for interest expense because if it's paid by cash, it's included here and it's a part of operating activities. If it's not paid in cash, it increases the current liability and it has to be adjusted. 
and it gets automatically adjusted if we are adding back the current liabilities. So many people do this question without understanding deeply the concept of it. So this is one thing. And one more takeaway is deferred tax liabilities uh, and deferred tax assets are always categorized as a long term. And since we added back current liabilities, we have not added back the deferred tax liability, which is long term. So we add it here. That is the speciality of this question. It's a very good question conceptually. Let us now go on to the next question. This is a one liner. So everything has to be added and subtracted except one, which is dividend paid actually. I have done it in the previous, uh, previous session. You can refer to that. Now, this is a lovely question. And here, they're asking you the net cash provided by operating. Now, they have, please note, they have made a comparison with the previous year's balance sheet. And these, what is shown here, are only increases or decreases. Okay. So, we have to do it by the indirect method. So, we start with net income. The challenge is the net income, how to get the net income. You have to read the last line. It says the dividend payout ratio. That and he's also explaining what's the dividend payout ratio because we don't study it in part one. We study it in part two. So he's explained it here. That is the percentage of earnings available to common shareholders that are paid out to them as dividends is 20%. So dividends are always paid out of retained earnings. And if this is the increase in retained earnings, it means it is a net income which is added because everything here is increases or decreases. So this is not actually the retained earnings balance. It is the increase in retained earnings, which comes from the net income for the year. But then dividends also have been declared and paid out of this, okay? So if the dividends have been paid out of this, that means it's not the full income. It is 80% of the income, okay? So now if, for example, if uh, uh, the net income was 100, <clears throat> they paid 20% of it as dividends. So dividends would have been 20, right? And what is left is 80. This is after paying the dividends, okay? Which corresponds to what is shown here. So what is net income? We have to find out net income. Net income to the ratio of the net income to the, uh, to the figure after paying the dividend is 100 by 80. So 100 by 80 into 2200 should give us, should give us the net income. 2200 into 100 divided by 80, which is 2750. Right? This is 2750. So that is how we get the net income. In other words, talking in a very simple language, 20% of this has been paid out. And this is the figure what you are seeing here is after 20%. So that means this is 80%. So 2200 divided by 80% should give you what was 100%, that is 2750. So you got your net income as 2750. You can also find out the dividend, uh, dividend figure. Dividend to the amount paid into the amount to the, the ratio of the dividend paid to the amount after the dividend is 20 by 80. So 20 by 80 into the figure after paying the dividend would give you the dividend amount. So 20 by 80 into 2200 is 550. This is the dividend amount. This is something extra I'm doing. 
you don't have to do this, but it to give you a better understanding of the whole thing. So now we can test it also. If 550 was a dividend paid out of an earnings of 2750, what's the percentage they're paying out? The percentage they're paying out is 20%. So the figures are correct. So yes, 2750. And now we'll make arrive at the operating cash flows. Now, accumulated depreciation has increased, the minus portion has increased by 500. So that means there has been a depreciation of 500. And we add it back because it's not non-cash outflow. I'm sorry, non-cash expense. Accounts receivable has, has increased by 200. So that would reduce <clears throat> the cash flow. It would have increased the income without bringing in cash, so we are removing it. Inventory, they have already mentioned, it has decreased. So when inventory decreases, it's an addition to cash flow because, because it's reducing the expense, I'm sorry, it's increasing the expense in the form of cost of goods sold without an outflow of cash. So 100. Let me explain the inventory again because there's always a confusion. People think that if in inventory is reduced, it's bringing in cash. Actually, it's not true. When inventory is reducing, the entry is credit inventory, 100, and debit cost of goods sold, 100. So this cost of goods sold would reduce the income. It would reduce it, right? And there is no cash outflow. So that is why we're adding back uh, inventory reduction, not because it is bringing in cash. People have this wrong notion, right? If you want more explanation on it, meet me in office hours and I'll explain that concept very clearly to you, right? And then uh, inventory is done. These are going to come in investment. So we would, would not bother about that. Accounts payable has increased by 250, because here all the positive figures means it has increased in the liability and equity section. So when accounts payable has increased, we add it because it brings in an asset without, without an outflow of cash. So we are adding it. And accruals has increased. Accrual, so we add it. For example, debit and expense, credit and accrual. Expense would reduce the income, right? But no cash is going out, so we are adding it, right? And then a long-term notes, these are all financing activities, okay? So we are not going to be bothered about that. We do the math for this to get operating activities. So operating cash flow would be 2750 plus 500 minus 200 plus 100 plus 250, plus 50, 3,450. So C is the correct answer. C is the correct answer for this question. Now, let us go ahead. They have asked us operating, we got operating. Now we are studying, right? So let us go ahead and do investing as well. And ultimately let us get the net decrease in cash, right? If you get that, that means we are on the right track. So let us go ahead. They have not asked you and you don't have to do it in the exam. But this is just for you to understand better. Now, if we are talking about investing activities, what has happened here? Investing activities, they have told you clearly the gross block of fixed assets have increased by 4,600. So that means they purchased uh, fixed assets. I'll put that fixed purchase of fixed assets. Okay, purchase. It's an outflow of 4,600. That's it. Nothing else happened in the investing, right? So that's an investing outflow. Now financing plenty has happened. Okay, financing in the financing section, 
uh, what has happened? One second, let me just erase that. Was there an issuance of common stock? No, there was no increase. Remember again, this is all about increases or decrease. Nothing has increased, but dividend was paid. Okay, so this is investing. So dividend was paid. And if you remember, we found out how much that figure is. It was here, 550, right? So 550 is an outflow, right? And then we have a long-term note which has decreased. It means that it was paid. How else it would decrease? It could decrease even if they wave it off, but then it would get added back in the income statement. And anyways, we would be deducting it here. Okay, so a long-term note is going to decrease the cash flows. But they took a long-term debt, which is adding to the cash flow. Long-term debt adding to the cash flow, 1,400. So let us see what is financing. The financing cash flow is, we do the math here, 1,400 minus 300 minus 550. And that would give us 550 positive. So let us add operating, which is 3450 minus investing 4,600 and add 550 for financing. And we would get the net cash outflow 600. You will get a minus figure which is what they have shown here. And we have arrived at it. So what we have done is quite correct, right? So this is for you to understand this entire thing. And yeah, the main tricky part is to get the net income. So we have to get it from the information given here. Once that is done, all the others, you already know how it is uh, made, right? And another thing to remember here is, Whatever is given are only increases and decreases, not the actual balance sheet amounts. So with that, we finished uh, the MCQs of, of statement of cash flows and how to prepare statement of cash flows.